EVO or Halal Money. I'm gonna travel the GTA 6 map of Miami, interviewing as many Muslim millionaires as I can, find out how we can get rich with good Halal Money just like them. And that way I don't gotta sell feed pics. Turn that shit off, motherfucker. I was getting changed, you know what I'm saying? First stop, the mosque, cause I don't know where else I'd find Muslims. Mm. Well, we'll okay. work on the lamp. We went to the first masjid and the security guard told us to get no. So, next place. Okay, so we just got to the second uh, mosque. It says it's a Pentecostal church of God, and yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it no. says Christian there. So to the next mosque. The mosque says it's on the, it's on the fucking highway. How do you guys find a place to pray? None of these places are on Google Maps properly. They don't have the hours. You can't call them. I thought that this was like the building when I looked at it. It's the highway. We went to the highway. Bro, in the hours, it says 24 seven. So I'm like, all right, a place to like pray all the time. That sounds lit. And then Sunday and Monday, it said hours might differ. So I'm like, maybe Sundays and Mondays, you know, God's chilling and he doesn't, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, on to mosque four. Mosque number four. I am done no. today with looking for mosques to get into. Um, so I just threw up an Instagram story. I'm looking for some Muslim millionaires to get interviewed. So I just threw that up on my Instagram. So we're gonna wait for some responses and yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. Three hours down the drain driving to different mosques. Hope was running low and I never found anyone. So that's the video. Just kidding. A Muslim millionaire friend of mine, Amir, swiped up for the interview. Low on HP, I grabbed a quick burger coffee combo to wolf down for energy and drove over to his place. Yummy! Alright, I think this is, this is it. Oh, Yo, Amir, what's going on, on, man? <laughs> awesome, bro. Welcome to the crib. Uh, a little bit dirty, had a couple guests over, but uh, yeah, this is one of the cribs, so welcome. The Muslim millionaires and just their massive places, bro. Well, I want to interview you real quick. You down to go on a, a little drive? Let's go on a drive. Yeah, let's talk. Let's hit it. When did you actually become a millionaire? Just right when I probably turned 19, yeah. What was that like when you finally hit a mill? It was like money directly in my pocket, right? You hear people say, oh, revenue, and I make this much per month, but they're not actually putting it in their pocket. So me actually starting to see put money in my pocket, that was great and that's when I started seeing like money come in that's when everything started changing that's when the lifestyle got upgraded and you know obviously I was able to help the people around me so yeah that was great if you had to start from zero today where all you had was your brain you lost your connections all your money but you just had your brain what would you do probably I'd get involved in um, something that involves selling products online or selling services online I'd start with that take that money and then put it into products put it into different things put it into investments and then I just scale out from there what are like some of your biggest networking tips that you have for people a lot about networking is the way that you introduce yourself like you have to be able to know how to introduce yourself to certain people if you're introducing yourself to someone that is very big in stock trading or whatever or a big hedge fund manager you're not gonna say oh yeah um, I sell gummy bears like you're not gonna say that you'd be like hey like you know I also know like a lot of people in you know this industry as well as you uh, do you know this guy do you, do you know that guy uh, in your industry like you have to build some type of rapport you have to build some type of connection to them and make them feel comfortable in their environment and make sure that they know that you know a little bit about what they do and you know in return hopefully you guys can share a connection and you know link up later and you know if it's whether it's money involved or not keeping around those people is really important because you never know when you're gonna need them what's the importance of making money the halal ethical way and not just going for quick OnlyFans dollars and doing yeah. some haram ash basically. So it's super important to be morally correct. It's super important to make sure that everyone gets taken care of. It's super important to make sure that you stick to those values forever, right? I have this crazy story. One of my friends, he owns a boat. He was renting out the boat. So he found out that while he was renting out this boat, there was people that were on the boat. They were partying, drinking and all this. We was lit. And then, He was not having it. You gotta act like you've been here before. Ew. He said, 
this. I hate this business. People are renting my boat and drinking and partying and doing all these degenerate activities. What he did is he sold that boat and he never got into the business ever again. It's always good to make sure that you're keeping your money halal, just as other people, you know, in the Jewish community, they keep their money kosher um, and all these other uh, communities that are more religious. It's very important. 100%. Keep the money halal. Amir, bro, thank you so much for the interview. No I appreciate worries. It. I have a couple more boys that I want in to introduce you to. I think you're going to like them. So let's see what happens. I'll, I'll see you next time. All right, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. As long as I can, bro. I like it once more, brother. Amir is reaching out to some of his Muslim homies for us, so as I'm patiently waiting on the next brother to interview, I'm gonna hit the streets asking. Excuse me, ma'am, are you Muslim? No. Are you a Muslim? No. Are you Muslim? No. Are you Muslim? No, I'm not, mate. Seven hours in and only one Muslim millionaire interview down, but luck came through. Amir hit me up and he actually has a friend only a few minutes away, so let's go meet up with him and get some more input on how to get rich halal. What's your name again? Mo. Mo? Awesome. Where the fuck are we? This is where people come to work and not fuck around. You think you're more productive working in an office like this? The biggest thing is if you're sitting somewhere where people are fucking around, then you're gonna fuck around too. But if you're sitting in a, pe in a place where obviously people are making money and getting shit done, you're also gonna get shit done too. So what were your first steps in entrepreneurship? Like, what did you do? First step was honestly YouTube, as simple as that. So first I wanted to be a YouTuber as soon as I got here, but I was like, ah, that's pretty hard and camera equipment is pretty expensive. iPhones weren't as good as it is now. What I ended up doing is I ended up finding a sales job. I found like one of those stupid banners where you're walking around the hallway and it's like $35 an hour. Uh, I picked one of those up and it was uh, cutting knives or selling knives at an office. And I went in there and I'm like, there's no chance. Like, this looks like a scam. So I went, instead of doing that, I found another job, which was door-to-door -door sales. And that was kind of my first step into entrepreneurship. At what age did you become a millionaire? I would say it took me about four years of like actually hustling, grinding, figuring out what I'm really good at until I first my, until I made my first million. And then once you make your first million, it's pretty easy to kind of maintain that and make more and duplicate your money from there. So it took me about four years. And what industry are you in now? Ecom. Ecom. So like, can you like elaborate a bit more? Like, do you sell like... <laughs> Slippers, like, you, what do you sell? <laughs> yeah, so funny enough, I didn't make my millions in e-com. I actually made it in crypto, but what I did do was I obviously built skills that generated me a lot of cash flow and money through e-com and then grabbed that money and put it into crypto, and that's where I really made my millions. In terms of what I sell, right now we just build brands that are either feel good or look good. So we either focus on selling products that make you feel good in terms of supplement-wise or look good in terms of beauty and cosmetics. Is that all halal money? I would say so. All of our products are halal stamped. So yeah, there's no gelatin, there's no pork. We're not selling drugs or hookers. So it's definitely all halal for sure. How has it been with being an entrepreneurship, especially in Miami, staying, um, being fully halal with money? There's so much devilish temptations where you can make a lot more money. How is it staying, I don't know, I guess close to your soul and like with your morals? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just staying close to God and Allah in general. So as long as you keep going to the mosque, you keep believing in your faith, and you understand what's good and what's bad for you, then the blueprint's already written for you. Like, you know, in, in Islam, everything you want to follow is already in the Quran. And anything that's bad for you is things that are prohibited from God. So as long as you continue to follow, obviously, what God sent you, and you be, continue to be ethical and do ethical things, then the halal will always be there for you. And, and you never want to go for it. You know, I look at Haram as like quick money. Quick money is never how you build wealth. Quick money in, quick money out. Exactly. So the quicker it comes, the quicker it goes. So coming from Syria and then making it as an entrepreneur, like what do your parents think of that? They probably thought like everything I was doing was a scam or Haram because it's like one day you're broke, you know, you're working at a restaurant as a busboy and then the next day you come in with a brand new $3,000 MacBook and they're like, where the hell did you bring this money? So... It took me a few years, actually, for my parents to understand, you know, how I make my money and where. But, you know, their number one rule is always, like, make sure it's halal. Make sure it's, like, you're not doing anything illegal. What's your last piece of advice to your Muslim brothers that are out there trying to make it an entrepreneurship? Because the premise of this video is how do people get rich while sticking with their morals and not getting sucked into the devilish temptations? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've been sucked into temptations before. But luckily, because of the foundation I had, I was able to kind of, like, stay out of it. I would say the biggest thing that I look at right now is who are you close with, right? Like shout out to my boy Fez, founder of Sweet Dreams actually, you know, great Muslim brother, 
always at the mosque, always kind of pushed me to be the best Muslim I can. So I think the biggest thing is just stay close to people who fear God as well. And as long as you're with those people, they push you to continue to be close to God, then you're in, in great hands. Rather than hit the streets again, you saw how that went. We had Mo hit up a few of his friends to see if they're down for the interview as well. I mean, honestly, if you come here, bro, we have an amazing spot. We've been here for like a month. It's, it's beautiful. Let me show you. Like Should we just slide over? Should we just slide over? Or yeah, <laughs> that is pretty nice. I'll yeah, take care of you. What do you guys need? You guys need water, food? <laughs> you, you, oh, shit, I'm tempted. Oh, yeah, pull up and let me know if you guys want to eat or anything. I'm about to order food. All right, sounds good. All right, thank you, bro. Bye. See you, sir. Bye. See, one thing about Muslims and Arabs you'll never find anywhere is hospitality. Number one, hospitality. Anything you need. You see how many times he asks you? You want food, you want drinks, you want water? Yeah. No other person will ask you that before you get there. No, nah, that's so true. Hey yo, bro, look at this door. Wait, what are your names? Zan, what's good? Zan, what's up guys? Great to meet you. Hassan, good to meet you, bro. Awesome, great to what's meet up, you, bro? boys. Thank you for coming. Crushing it in a Miami high rise right now. Look at the, the view is absolutely beautiful. So when did you guys actually become millionaires? About four years ago. How long have you been doing entrepreneurship? Our whole lives. We've been building businesses for nearly the past decade together. I remember when Zan was selling skateboards at the age of 12. So uh, I've had good role models with him and my father my whole life. That's fire. What industry did you guys become millionaires in? Where'd you make all your money? So initially in the web two e-commerce, online sales, digital marketing space. Sold a Shopify store for like 15K. We had drop shipping stores, physical product stores, Amazon stores. Uh, Honestly, anything that allows you to generate money online, we've done it. We've tried it, yeah. yeah. And the first big break was Amazon. We did seven figures on Amazon. If you guys had to start from zero, like all you have is your brain, but no money, no social media, is nothing. What would you guys do? I would build up a skill and then provide that skill to the market and use that skill until I could build a product or service around it. Yeah, and I would go find people who I can, you know, go work with even if it's for free and build up those skills and tone, hone those skills so I become highly effective uh, and also can benefit from their network, from you know all the all the mentorship that they can provide me because that's going to be like there's no shortcut to success because you got to work hard, but. Like that's the best type of shortcut you're gonna get. Golden advice so far, building up a skill should be your number one priority, but I know a lot of you feel stuck. You just need to get up in the morning, grab your balls, and look at the flag. You see me talking about it, but posting shorts is an amazing way to make cash right now, and it's what I'm best at. So I'm gonna be hosting a free live coaching call to show you guys how to get started right away, and it's all halal cash. It's gonna be an hour of free game, so you definitely don't want to miss it. The link to register is at the top of the description. Back to asking. The importance of making your money the ethical halal way. Money simply just amplifies who you are. So, you know, we said it earlier, right? It's, you know, being a millionaire is nice. Being a Muslim is better. You know, if someone came to me and told me that you can have all this money, but you have to lose your faith, both of us would easily be like, it's all good. <laughs> <Yeah>. You know, <laughs> you know, we know what we're doing, right? But it's very important to realize that you, money just amplifies who you are. and. Essentially, being a, Mus a good Muslim means you're a good person, right? You have good character traits, you're a good human being, you're giving back, you're connected to God, and you're, you're a servant, and you do what he's uh, instructed for us to do on this earth. And all that means is that when you, know, you get your money through bad means, it's only going to amplify bad things in your life. If people can sell their soul to the devil, you have to know that there's also the good side of it. There's also God. And it's, it's a fight in this world that between is, good and evil. That's yeah. such an interesting yeah. point because everyone acknowledges that these celebrities are selling their soul and I'm yep. like, if you see that that's automatically proof of God right yep. there because yeah. yep. they're not it's not a coincidence if you're gonna make 50 million in a lifetime that's already guaranteed by God yeah it, and that's what's it's, it's literally just up to you whether you make that in the right or the wrong way yeah I mean for example right pick up your right foot Real quick. all right now pick up your other foot right you can't and that's basically the distinction between destiny and free will. One is destiny, so that amount of money, whatever it is that's destined for you. How you made that money, what you did when you got that money, how you thought and what you did once you had that money, did you act a certain way, right? Or whatever it may be. You know, I've always been incredibly conscious of, okay, now that I've received this blessing or whatever it is, what am I doing with these blessings to show God, am I grateful or am I not? Am I, am I ready for more or am I just, 
you know, so foolish that this came into my life and I've completely changed as a person, right? You want to become a better person the more money you have. You want to be a more spiritual Muslim and pray more when you have more wealth and blessings or whatever it may be, and, and, not and, less. And alhamdulillah, it's all a blessing from God. <laughs> Even just having, being born into a Muslim family, I mean, it's, a, it's the greatest blessing. That is the you biggest know? blessing. Uh, blessing. So, you know, I, I wouldn't take credit for it. You know, even when people say self-made millionaire, I don't consider myself made a millionaire because one... Yeah, we've never even said that. We've yeah. never even said that. I have yeah. my brother, I have yeah. my dad, who I wouldn't be who I am without them. But then if I didn't have God, if I didn't have faith, like, who would I be? God made me. Yeah, yeah, yeah God exactly. Made exactly. God exactly. did. All right, boys, I think that was yeah, very helpful. Similar, bro. Can you just give me a quick house tour real Absolutely. quick? Yeah. The bathroom of a Muslim millionaire's place. Ooh, very nice. nice. Very nice. Kitchen, bunch of lads hard at work. They all stared at me as I took this shot. Balcony, not too shabby of a view, eh? Yeah, I love my job. And the most important part, the table, where the halal millions are made. This is an exact skit of how those meetings go down. 100% accurate. Please, uh, don't question my uh, journalistic integrity. Dude, it was great having you, man. You have any more interviews planned? Yeah, I got one more really, really big one yeah. lined up. And then that's about it, bro. But thank you. Yeah, of course, bro. Appreciate it. All right, so see you guys soon. Thank you, bro. Big-ass door! On to the final boss of the interviews, Ahmad Mahmoud. By the way, all these interviews came out to like a half hour long, but for the sake of Miss YouTube Susan not ruining me, I had to cut them down. So if you want to watch the full interviews, they're totally free in my Sunny Fast Discord. And uh, okay, interview time. Ahmad, it's great to finally meet you. I saw you for the first time when you were doing like the paid stuff. You really popped out of nowhere. So, you know, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do this interview. Um, just got a few, few quick questions. The first one is, when did you actually become uh, a millionaire? I became a millionaire six months ago. How long were you in entrepreneurship before hitting seven figures? Since 13 years old. When I was in school, I was selling lighters and then I started selling sneakers, you know waiting in line for the new Yeezys, and then started doing car sales, like luxury car sales. Really started working at 13. That was when I did my first influencer marketing move. And then that was the start of the agency. And that's when really things kicked off with the sneaker business. And that's obviously the business that made me the most money. What industry are you in right now? What are you, what are you grinding at all day? Other than Tate interviews. Uh, so the interview is just for fun. You know, it's like how people play sports on the weekend. For me, the mm -hmm. podcast is just purely fun. I barely make money from there. My main source of income is definitely my influencer marketing agency, Plug Media. So that's really what we what we focus on. If you had right. start to start from zero, nothing, all you had was your brain, what would you do? Okay, it's a good question. I would probably do, you know, I would say e-com because it's, such a guaranteed way to make money if you like put in the work like drop shipping if you're willing to spend the hours it's like almost guaranteed but i tried it and it's, i find it really 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 boring like i i hate it so i'd probably end up doing what i'm doing right now which is influencer marketing and personal brand so i just start uploading on tiktok three videos a day i can guarantee anyone watching this video right now if you upload three videos a day of filming yourself like yourself actually talking to the camera three videos a day for three months and you don't have at least 10,000 followers, like I'll give you a thousand dollars, you know? I want to ask you about the importance of staying religious, you're a Muslim, and how important halal ethical money is, because I even know in the Quran, it talks about the differences of the types of money that you make. I consider myself pretty religious. I'm not nowhere close to where I want to be, but I pray five times a day. You know, I try to avoid sin and alcohol. You'll never see me with like, I will never post a girl on my page one time. You know, I never have posted that single picture of the woman. So I, I'm very careful with my content and I try my best to stay halal. Even when it comes to agency, I've turned down a lot of deals. So I think God is everything. Like if you have a lot of money, but you don't have closeness to God, you have nothing, you know? If you don't believe, you're just, you're, you're living a life of nihilism. It's just meaningless. You're just waiting to die. And when you die, nothing happens. So there's no accountability. So I may as well, you know, fuck that guy over or kill that guy or steal from that guy, you know, because there's no accountability if there's no God. So even if you don't believe in God or like it doesn't make sense to you, it would benefit your life and serve you so much if you did. Easy money in, easy money out is one of the truest things. Yeah. So like it not only will you not feel satisfied, sure. it literally bites you in the ass. You see it actually, these people who make money illegal or like unethically or haram. The way they spend it is insane like because because they don't know the value of it because the way they made it was so easy so you'll see these same people they'll just blow it on shit. you know like for example these people do the casinos they'll just blow a millionaire or a billionaire because and i don't want to name names you know i don't have uh, anything any hate in my heart against any specific influencer or creator but what i'm saying is you see the way they made the money 
it was it felt easy because that's the way they spend it. So you end up spending that money so quickly because you don't. If you see like drug dealers, for example, historically, they're the ones who have like these flashy cars and these flashy lifestyles because they don't know the value of money because they kind of made it easily. Whereas the people who strove to make like companies and like off the backs of labor and grind and sacrifice, they don't spend it the same way. And you need to make it like that because so you understand the value of it. Because otherwise, if you got it so easy, you're just going to blow it. And then you're just going to become a degenerate, you know, because sometimes blowing that money, you will end up ruining your life. The last thing I want to ask you is I want to get some networking tips from you or and stuff that you could share with people watching this video. Because in the last, I don't know, year and a half, I've seen you interview Andrew Tate, Sneeko, Fresh and Fit. You were just in the Nelk Boys video, I'm pretty sure. What do you do to get these crazy connections? I can't say 100% that I, this is all my effort. I'm definitely gifted with this kind of thing. It's probably one of my best attributes about myself so there is a huge natural element to it but i have crafted it over time you know so you know books like how to win friends and influence people <clears throat> i've read and i've used those strategies multiple times but i think one thing that people underestimate a lot is the real value of being yourself and i know it sounds so corny but really like i think people sense when you're someone who's true to yourself like you are who you are you know what i mean in this space yeah. with the influencers and all this stuff it's so like it's like refreshing man when there's someone who's genuine and like you can actually it almost feels like you can like look into them when you look in their eyes like for example tate and the reason why i know tate is i messaged him when he was just starting to pop off and i've done that with many 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 big celebrities i hit them up when they were just on the come up you know and direct message offering value so tate before i did a podcast with him I, I got for him a hotel room for free. I got for him a Maybach for one month with 24-hour service. I arranged for him a, a, a sky, uh, not sky, sorry, um, a desert buggies. I arranged for him jet skiing. Like some of these stuff, we didn't end up going with it, and, but and I had arranged the plans. You know and I did that, everything know, before, before I asked him for anything. Like I gave all the value first and then I asked him. Even when I asked him, I told him there's no strings attached. If you say no, the cars are still yours. The Maybach is still yours. The plans are still planned. Everything is going to happen. So okay, no that's, that's the real. Request. That's the juice right there. And you know what's so yeah. special about that, in my opinion, is you're not just offering him money. You're offering him, like, an experience. So it's, like, yeah. it's also it's more fun. Like, the car, the jet skis. Like, while yeah. he's on those he, memories, cause... it's thank you, Ahmad. Ahmad, thank you so much. That was extremely valuable. On to I the next. It. We got to go find the next. Hello. Halal money. Muslim millionaire. Halal, Halal money. W interviews. I am running on 48 hours of sleep. I mean, staying awake for 48 hours. Like I said, join the Sunny Fast Discord and you will find the full 30 minute interviews there to enjoy. And with that, peace, guys. I'm going to sleep.